Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto to episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we'll be looking at the markets, going through a few charts and answering any questions you have. If you've got any charts you want me to look at, um, let me know in the comment section and we'll just have a chat about crypto in general. I'm working hard on the, <laughs> working hard, I'm working hard on the um, kind of launch that's coming up on the 28th of July. We've got another couple of days, comes out on Sunday night and I'm working on videos for them. I wasn't, I was kind of wasn't feeling too good about doing the big launch, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway and just see it as a process. Um, so um, I'm working hard on that as well. So there's a link down below if you want to join the premium group, but get a free training class as well. There's a three video series that I've got coming out on the 28th of July that's going to show you how to trade or what to do, how to make money in crypto with trading and kind of other various strategies as well. And I'll kind of give you my story um, as well. So you can get the link down below for that. You can sign up for that class just now and you'll get a chance to join the premium group. Premium groups only open for seven days every six months and it'll be open for seven days on the 28th of July. So working hard on that just now, as well as the house, still doing the house, doing the bathroom yesterday as well. So lots going on just now. So if you could crush the likes just now, that would really help the channel. I don't know that strange clicking is. Get rid of that. I'm just going to see if we're live or not. Right, are we live? Are we live? Yes, yeah, we are. Are we live? Are we live? We are. It's just the uh, chat. Oh, the chat has just been updated just now. Okay, so I'll just jump over to the chat area just now. Okay, we have Chris Camus is in the house. Welcome to you. Good to see you here. Joe Cook is back with us. Um, Gordy Boy is in. Chris Edinburgh, Chris from Edinburgh is in the house. Jason Clayden, Crypto Cannabis, David Clayden, and Jambi Kariri is in. Adeb Finn, one of our Brown admins, is in the house. Thank you for all the news stories, Adeb. Um, so some of the news stories I've got today. I've not been doing the news stories this week because I've been kind of working um, on the launch. So I've not been doing that, but I've been reading out the kind of news stories in the morning. We've got a couple from this morning as well. So, Adeb, thank you very much for doing that. Really appreciate you, mate. Scotch Bill is in the house, saying I love the intro. Thanks very much, mate. Tony P is in. Um, don't think need the presence though, mate. No seagulls today. Yeah, there is seagulls. They're just not as um, kind of vociferous today. Chris Camu, well, they're over here today. Um, um, oh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Um, meme, meme, something, something to do with meme. Daz Hibernia is in, Andreas, Marcus Chaparai, Kev T is in, G Slick, who else um, is in, Ross Davidson, Vin, Mac Pollen. You mind meme, you mind meme. Right, okay, you mind meme. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, thought I'd seen somebody else in the house. Nope. Have I missed anybody? No, I've not missed anybody. Okay, so jump over to the market, see what the hell's going on just now. Bitcoin failed to break out. We thought it was going to be a breakout yesterday. It broke out from uh, a descending a descending channel, uh, rather. Uh, it failed to kind of make any headway after that, and it kind of broke down. So market capitalization, 270 billion. Bitcoin dominance has gone down to 64.5%. We have Winners are Nano, Aurora, Stratus, Wax, IOST, not by much. So there's only a few in the green at the moment in dollar value. There's only a few in the green. So we've got about 12% in the green, 80% in the red. Lambda down 13%. Japan content down 10.56%. And that's only two in double digit reds. But all the rest are kind of reds in dollar value as well, purely because the Bitcoin price has gone down so much. Look at the BTC value, we'll see that's slightly different. We've got about 60%, 60-70% in the green and 30% in the red. So not that much in the red and Satoshi value, and that's the value you should be looking at, I think. USD, we'll just look at the overall markets. Now got 2,387 cryptocurrencies listed on CoinMarketCap. And see who's the winners and losers are. All right, I've not kind of sorted that for the volume. So Cyber Music up 4,000% on a big, huge volume total of $4. So we don't, won't count that one. 
Polis is up 116% on 27,000. That's 4 million market capitalization. Safe Insure is up again, nearly a million volume. It's up 96%. And it's up to 2 million market cap. Bit New Chain is up 81% on 85,000 volume. Market cap of 9 million. What else is up? Bionic is up. Snapcoin is up as well, 258,000 market cap, 16,000 volume. Cryptonex is up as well. I'm just looking for some low market cap ones. Okay. That's my, my dog. Not feeling too well today. Um, Fleeta is up 44%, 142,000 volume. And Orico is up 11 million volume. Hmm. So this is where we look for kind of hidden gems. I've kind of explained that in a video I was doing for the premium group as well. Um, so, but I didn't kind of cap it. I didn't put the volume at 100,000. It takes too long for the cash to come through. Okay, look at crypto bubbles. What the hell's going on with crypto bubbles? This is over the last 24 hours. You can see mostly in the red there. This is dollar value. That's because the Bitcoin price came down below the 10,000. Look over the last hour, it's looking much better. Looking in the green. So we're in the green um, over the last hour. So it looks as if things are coming up and it could be things are coming up for um, the alts since people are getting out of Bitcoin and it looks like they're starting to go into the alts, which is a good sign for the alts coming up. And we'll have a look at some of the alts um, charts as well. Okay, we'll go back to the chat. Uh, Mitch Dieter is in, Mark Innes is in. Good morning to see uh, Good to see you. Kukla is in this morning. Chris Cash is in. Gino Dow, Kim O'Brien, one of our brown admins, is in as well. Thank you very much for looking over the video as well. I'm um, just making videos for um, the launch, and Kim's been looking over that, so I really appreciate that, Kim. Hi, from, from Rainy Tesco's. Are you in Tesco's just now? 7,000 volume for Bab. Never looked at Bab for a while. How will we look at Bab? It says 4,000 volume there. So not much going on with that, but it says 4,000 volume there. I secretly hope um, Bab really do well. Even if I'm out of it, I do secretly hope that they do extremely well. John Graham is in the house as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to nip over to the charts just now. So BTC failed to break out. So it was on that kind of um, descending channel that was seen yesterday. And I kind of showed you that yesterday. There's a descending kind of channel uh, coming down, but that was on the hourly. I'm just looking on the hourly just now. So it's coming down here. We'll just kind of put it up again. Parallel channel. Did. 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 So it broke out of there. Uh, kind of around about 9,800. Kind of broke out. We thought it was going to go, okay, this is it. This is it going back up again. It did go up to 10,200, but then it came back down again, crossing over on the one hour and the seven over the 50, down at around about 9,975. So it failed that breakout. So it looks as if the Bitcoin dominance is losing steam a bit. Just now, Bitcoin dominance is at 64.5%. So it could be that we've gone down or it's just so topsy turvy nobody can read it. Just now it's like extremely difficult to read. Just now we thought with a descending triangle and a breakout from there, can I, it's surely to go up from here. And it did go up, but subsequently came back down again. And we're talking yesterday in the premium group is um, that this market is so heavily manipulated, is it tradable? Can we trade it? Yes, we can was the answer. And we're talking we'll look at this just now. So we're talking about trading on a five minute chart. I'm gonna get rid of this just now. Talking about trading on a five minute chart, and I showed in a premium group um 
if you're just trading a five minute chart over the last 24 hours, there's only been about four or five trades. Because most people think if you trade on a five minute chart that you're going to be in and out all the time. And sometimes that can be the case. And you just wouldn't trade. It wouldn't be a trading day if it was that choppy. But this has been been a good five minute um, trading chart day um, over the last couple of days actually. So if we start here, if we go in. Now somebody was saying, okay, this is a lagging indicator. Uh, it is a lagging indicator whereby when we look at this real time, we could think, okay, the price is going to go up above the 70 EMA is going to go above the 50 EMA, but then kind of things turn around and it doesn't go above it or it doesn't go below it as expected. So we have to wait on confirmation candles. So usually, typically on a five minute chart, if you're going to trade on a five minute chart, you're going to have to wait on a couple of confirmation candles just to say, yep, it's definitely over 70 EMA, is definitely over the 50 EMA, and that's how we're going to trade it. So we'd probably trade. We wouldn't have got in here at 9,722. We would have got in here after a couple of confirmation candles at 9,756 to say, okay, that's us. We're going in. Com uh, three or four confirmation candles there as 70 EMA has definitely crossed over the 50 EMA, so it's time to get back in. So that's a five minute chart. So that's if this is kind of real time we're doing it in. But if we were doing it in real time, then we have to look at that confirmation. We have to wait in the confirmation. So I forgot to kind of get back to um, the person who said down the kind of premium group as well. I think it was Maxi. So Maxi, if you're watching, that's how we do that. And um, when we're trading on a five minute, we wait for confirmation candles. So here, for example, I'm just going to fence this here. So this five minute chart crossed over at 9,655, but we wouldn't have got it for that price. We wait on a confirmation candle. So it'd say here, okay, this... We'd probably get in at 9,709, but subsequently went down. But you still stay in it until it crosses back down. And it, you can see it kind of subsequently went back up. Came down a wee bit, but didn't cross over and went back up to 10,184. So if we go in round about that price, we'll just say, okay, we'll measure it. Could have got a good 4.9%. If you're on 10x margin, that's 49% and go out there. Depends on what your kind of goals are. You could ladder out at 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. And then it kind of traded sideways there for a short while. And then big jump down. Now again we wouldn't have got in here. We wouldn't have went short here. We'd have been a couple of confirmation candles. And maybe around about 10,000 maybe here, around about 10,003 or 10,000 we would have shorted Bitcoin there until here at 9,700. So, say 10,000, we shorted it. We've got another 2.9%, which is 29% if you're 10x margin. So, if you were trading this just now, you'd say, okay, we've just crossed over in five minutes. We've got about six or seven confirmation candles there to say it's a definite crossover. So you'd be buying Bitcoin just now. So you'd be buying, say, 9,000, you'd have probably went in around about 9,757, but say you went in just now, 9,785. You'd be buying Bitcoin just now, and in hopes that that goes back up. So that's how you trade on a five minute chart. And you can see there's not been that many trades over the last 24 hours. So it is possible to trade on a five minute chart with margin. Now you don't need to trade on margin but you can trade it uh, on margin for bigger percentages uh, and bigger gains in Bitcoin as well. I think if you look at Keith Waring's um, kind of videos, he's been doing some margin trading on Bybit as well. There's a link down below for Bybit. I do like Bybit much better than Bitmex, um, although stopped out big time a few times. Uh, lost a lot of money and traded it back and managed to get uh, some of it back and just subsequently came out. So I'm not trading at the moment. Because um, I've just put the funds into XRP um, just now and keeping the funds in some of the hidden gems as well that we've got or that I've got. But that's how you trade. And that's how you trade um, on the five minute chart with um, Bitcoin. And Max, if you're watching, that's how you kind of wait on the confirmation. You wait on the confirmation candles to say it's a definite crossover. Because up here, if we kind of look here, 
we could see there's probably looks as if there's going to be a big crossover here but you'd have to wait in the confirmation candles there's nothing really incoming after that so there's no confirmed crossover on to the upside so you wouldn't have got in here you'd wait so you'd have to wait on a three or four candles after that okay go back to chat just now um mina Camus is in Welcome to you, Jeff Calhoun. Bob, what a joke. And Libra is basically going to do what they've been trying to. Um, Debbie Coydenley is bad news from Twitter. They had ice creams in the office yesterday. I don't just <laughs> know the sort of update we need. Um, yeah, that's not good. That's, is that true? Obviously, it's true. Um, Debbie said it. Right, so Tim is enjoying the AC and carrying on with work. We did get ice cream, though. Enough said. B is in the house this morning. Um, Kim O'Brien, crush the likes, guys. David Schwartz, hello to you. James McGee, isn't Libra supposed to be a stable coin? Um, no, it's not meant to be a stable coin. Um, God the boy, rip Tyler Jenks. Yeah, Tyler Jenks. I meant to mention it yesterday as well. Tyler Jenks, who talked about kind of hyperwave and he was on with Tone Vase and Leah Wald as well, a lot of the videos. He kind of passed away. So um, kind of rest in peace Tyler Jenks as well. I didn't agree with a lot of um, kind of what he said, but I did respect him massively um, for his dedication and um, just for everything they kind of put into the crypto world as well. And his passion about kind of hyperwave theory and stuff and um, just the kind of charting and TA as well. Really, really brilliant stuff. Um, great news from Dash from South America. What was the great news from Dash? Just like CNN, please. CNN. Content Neutrality Network. Hmm. We've looked at this before, but um, everything's merging into one. So I can't remember why we looked at that. CNN. VTC. Just look at the charts for it. That's the one hour chart. It's crossing down over the one hour. And look at the daily. And near this all time low. For CNN. So it's coming up off this all time low. Look at the four hourly. So it crossed over in the four hourly. It's crossed over a couple of times there, but failed to kind of really break out. Apart from this time, that was back in June 2019. Broke out from there for a 66% upside. So we've um, crossed over in the four hour again, but we've got about five red candles there in a row on the four hour chart. So short term, it looks like it's going to go back down again for Content Neutrality Network, and I don't know anything about it, but I'm sure we've looked at it before, I just can't remember. We've looked at that many um, over the, the last couple of years. But where has it been before? 34 Satoshi, is it one Satoshi just now? Probably better looking at ETH. CNN, Ethereum. So 60 grey uh, and going down just now. And it did, it was up to 657. So 10x from where it used to be. I think it's more than that actually, but yeah, so I don't know too much about that. I don't know if you're into that. Um, cheese Slick, Chris can move ETH please. So look at some of the big ones as well. So Bitcoin is going up, um, said a five minute crossover, so it's going up just now. Now it looks as like if it's on a run. So look at on the 50 minute, you can trade it, I like to trade on the 50 minutes as well. Is it crossed over? It's not crossed over yet. So it's not confirmed crossover on the 15 minute. But probably within the next hour and a half, the next six candles, if it goes up, will be a crossover on the 50 minute, which is a, a more bullish indicator as well. Okay, so look at um, Ethereum, BTC, we'll look at the USD value as well. So we're up to 2.2 million um, Satoshi. And that's a 15 minute, we want to go to the 4 hourly one. So we've crossed over in 4 hourly, so it's looking good um, for the 4 hourly crossover. And we'll just look at ETH um, USD.
at two hundred and sixteen dollars going down. The way just now on a four hourly is still on a downward slope. It was at three hundred dollars. You should have sold. You should have shorted at three hundred dollars. You'd have still been in the short. And um, possibly made about thirty odd percent on that short if you went short on Ethereum. So if you're trading on margin as well, it might be good to trade um, kind of the, like the lesser ones like Ethereum, uh, Litecoin, XRP, Cardano, etc. These are more, they're not as volatile. Kind of five minutes for that. So in five minutes we've crossed over from 215 to 216. And um, we'll look at Litecoin. This is the five minutes, four hours. Let me turn this far on. Turn on low so you don't hear it. All right, so Litecoin has crossed over. Uh, Satoshi value. Um, so it's coming up for 944,000 Satoshi. So it looks as if it's on its way up. I'm thinking that Ethereum, Litecoin, Cardano, XRP are all going to start to move quite soon unless uh, unless Bitcoin takes another jump up big time. We'll just keep on that just now. This is XRP. XRP looks like it's about to break out from this triangle here. Yeah. So you can see the resistance line up here is starting to break that. I kind of broke it the other day. This is on a four hour chart. I broke it the other day and a possible upside to around about 4,000 or 3,900 for a breakout for XRP. So we're at 3,197 just now. So we've got this symmetrical triangle here and it's looking at a breakout here for XRP. Sorry, babe. Hit my dog in the head there. <laughs> She's still sleeping. Right, so yeah, it's looking for a breakout here um, for XRP. <laughs> I know I keep saying this, <clears throat> but it does break out sometimes. It kind of broke out here for about 15% gain. Um, and this is not in a channel or anything. We're looking, no, it's not in a channel. So it's definitely a symmetrical triangle. So it's looking to break out from here. So wouldn't be surprised if we see kind of movements upwards for XRP, Litecoin, Ethereum, Cardano, uh, basically the big boys, the big alts, Litecoin, Bitcoin, I'm just going to ignore, I know a lot of people don't like it when I do it, but I'm just going to ignore Bitcoin Cash altogether. Binance Coin could go back up again, obviously as well, and we've got another IEO coming out. I don't like the IEO this time around, um, $30. What we'll to do is, why would you kind of go in for it? But maybe I'm missing something. I've not kind of fully read it yet, if I'm being honest. Uh, EOS will probably break out as well. Stellar, Cardano. Tron, Tron is in kind of deep shit just now. Um, to be honest, we'll have a look at Tron, what's doing with the charts. TRX, BTC. So I think Bram Cohen came out today as well and was talking about Tron and BTT, BitTorrent. So I think they're kind of in a whole heap of shit just now. So it's not looking good for Tron at the moment. So major, major red flags coming up. And there has been red flags for a while now. I've been speaking about them over the last couple of months. I've not been very precipitous about it, but I've been kind of spoken about the red flags. And it's coming to, it's coming to light just now. But there's still millions of Tron fans out there. And I hope they I hope they can get it back. Okay, so look at some of the news stories. We'll just very quickly go through as well. This was a quite interesting question as well. Um Huel we see oh, why wait for Facebook uh, Facebook China can issue its own Libra. So everybody's talking about Facebook um, issuing its Libra coin, saying it's got this it could be damaging to the US economy, it could be damaging to the US dollar. Now what is it that's making that noise? Right, it's Bitcoin blockchain whispers it's making it. Um, so they say it could be damaging to US currency, but they kind of, as soon as I kind of thought, as, as soon as it came out, I thought, why, why do 
other people or other companies or other countries not bring out their own coin. I don't understand it. Um, and they're, they're saying it's a threat. Why does the US not come out with its own sovereignty coin? Why does China not do it? Why does Britain not do it? Why does Europe, other European countries not do it? South America, etc. And all of them are, are going to do it. And I think this is what kind of, a lot of people are starting to ask that question. I think a lot, of people, a lot of countries are going to be doing that. They'll be issuing their own sovereignty coin, which is the way forward, I think. I think it's just a logical next step in the crypto kind of space just now. So why is everybody worrying about kind of Facebook Libra? I know it's kind of different as well, but they're all getting kind of getting their knickers in a twist about it. You say, issue your own coin. Do You don't need to worry about it. So this is a Huawei CEO. Um, as national news outlet Sina reported, quoting a press conference in Italy on July the 18th, Ren Zhengfei believes China can easily create a digital currency with the same value proposition as Facebook's Libra. China can also issue such a currency by itself. Why wait for others to issue it? The power of a country is always stronger than an internet company, he said, responding to a question from Italian economics journalist Fabio, or Fabio Savelli. So I, I just don't understand why nobody, well, more people aren't doing it as well. I know we've got one, Scotland might have one called Scotcoin. I'm um, speaking to the owner of that as well. I don't know how quite, quite how they're going to do it and um, how they're going to work it. I've um, been speaking about how to, or he's been speaking about how to develop that kind of further. Um, so I think countries should issue their own digital currency. I just think it's the next logical step, and I thought that was interesting that came up there as well. Get rid of that. Uh, another big blow to Tron, this is what I was talking about, Bram Cohen, BitTron creator, brings forth new allegations against Justin Sun. So, since Justin Sun, Tron founder postponed the million dollar lunch with Warren Buffett, he seems to be jumping out of the frying pan into the fire with each turn. Yesterday, as we reported, Justin made a suspicious apology for overhyping the lunch with Warren and then later deleted it. Additionally, the events surrounding his whereabouts and standing with the Chinese government authorities remain a mystery after purported kidney stones detention. Uh, on the heels of the fiasco, the Tron community has been caught up in a selling frenzy as Tron suffers a massive loss in value. The recent accusation against Justin comes in a wake of raging tweets done by Bram Cohen, the founder of BitTorn and presently the CEO of Chia Network. So the kind of saying here, Bram Cohen claims Justin hasn't signed off the last BitTorn payment. So in 2018, the Chinese blockchain billionaire Justin acquired BitTorn from Bram Cohen for a whopping $140 million making BitTorn Inc. and his sister data transfer application U-Torn part and parcel of the Tron family. Now Bram came forward with a new allegation on Twitter stating that Justin has not held up his end of the deal and thus he has not received his last payment for the BitTorn deal. So he's kind of tweeting about that, so it's all very public just now. So I kind of feel sorry for Justin's son actually, but um, he's getting it from all angles just now. So there's a shitstorm going on just now and it's reflected in the price at the moment as well. 232 Satoshi as in the moment you can see this big downward spiral here for Tron so I wouldn't like to be a holder at the moment if I'm being honest I think there's short term trading opportunities for Tron but I just wouldn't be a kind of holder at the moment uh, of Tron I think other stuff's going to come out as well but we need to wait and see but I do I have to say I have to admit, I do feel for Justin Sun, he's just getting it everywhere um, from all angles just now. Um, what was I looking at? Yeah, BitMEX continues to lose steam post CFTC rumor. This was from yesterday, I was kind of looking at this. Um, so, this is Spencer Noon. 85 million worth of Bitcoin moved off of the exchange. Average value of withdrawals transactions tripled. Trade volume dropped by more than 50%. This is on BitMEX. This has been a long time coming for BitMEX. A long time coming for BitMEX because of the kind of... It's not dodgy. It was just, you know, those spikes. It was just a lot of things with BitMEX that we didn't like. And I kind of reported it ages ago as well. Um, just a big, huge spike that they had. It didn't seem to be anywhere else in the market. Um, but uh, a lot of people were leaving BitMEX. And a lot of people were just waiting on another kind of platform to come along that was just as good but uh, much more kind of honest and much more user friendly as well and I think Vibit is definitely good um, for that, Vibit is looking really good just now 
So yeah, it seems if Bitmex is um, on its way out. But I think they've, they've made a lot of money from it, and I think they've made here while the sun shone, and I think they've done well from it. And US SEC gives crypto gaming from the go-ahead on quarters token. So the SEC has cleared a crypto gaming company to issue blockchain tokens without registration, deeming the tokens to be to not be securities. And the SEC published its determination on July the 25th via the Commission's website as a reply to an apparent inquiry from the company Pocket for Quarters on its proposed quarters tokens. And Jonathan Ingram, Chief Legal Advisor of the SEC's FinHub Division, wrote, based on the facts presented, the Division will not recommend enforcement action to the Commission if in reliance on your opinion as counsel that the quarters are not securities. So that's the SEC and um, gives them the go ahead for the quarters token as well. I don't know if that will mean much for the company but it looks good for them. Bloomberg Bitcoin wave and Amazon fueling legendary investor huge 2019 gains. Hedge fund manager early in, uh, Amazon invest in Bitcoin enthusiast Bill Miller has reportedly gained 46% in the first half of 2019 on the hedge fund he launched three years ago. So Miller, using an investment strategy that secured his winning streak at leg amazing capital management, investing heavily in beaten down securities that trade at a large discount to their intrinsic value. And he's kind of really bullish on Bitcoin just now. So with the economy growing modestly, the Fed about to embark on an easing cycle and the inflation um, quotient the extreme diversion in valuations between bond proxies such as utilities and consumer staples and cyclical value stocks is likely to begin reversing. This represents an excellent opportunity for investors to earn excess returns. So this year bullish bets on Bitcoin um, along with the retail giant Amazon as well. So this is kind of how I feel that if we're looking at the beaten down cryptos instead of looking for the ones that could 100x, 200x, 300x we look for the ones that have already established themselves in the crypto world, the likes of Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Binance. Binance is only the one that's kind of decoupled really from um, Bitcoin and kind of done its own thing and kind of went parabolic. So um, I'd wait until September until I made a decision on that. EOS um, could go up as well. Stellar, Cardano, um, Monero, Dash, Chainlink, Neo, IOTA. All of them, uh, Ethereum Classic, I think they could all go up. And all go up by 10x. So I think if we're looking for, excuse me, a much, my ears need to pop. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I think if we're looking for a safer return on our investment, if we kind of um, went in with $500, $100, $500, $1,000, and you're looking for a 10x over the next year, I think it's safe to say we could go into Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, all these ones I've just mentioned, and probably get 10x um, within the next kind of year or two, which is a brilliant ROI if you look at it from that point of view. Excuse me. Um, James McGee sub. Thank you very much, James. Good to see you here, and thanks for subbing as well. Go to boy crypto bobby video last night was all about xrp and his concerns on the company ripple selling millions of xrp to fund the business have performed the worst out of the top 10 coins this year it has it has see this is what's happening just now so go to boy you're looking you've got bias confirmation against xrp i've got bias confirmation for xrp so you're going to subconsciously and i do as well subconsciously i look for good news on xrp and that's what I tend to focus on. Subconsciously, you're looking for bad news on XRP, and that's what you kind of um, find as well. So I know what, I know exactly what you're saying because I look for the two sides and try and be objective. But having looked at all of that, having looked at the billions are put into the marketplace and kind of out of escrow and kind of back into escrow and kind of put out, I just kind of know why um, they're doing that. I uh, understand the tokenomics of it as well. Um, but other people kind of report it in a different way about this millions or billions of being put out into the marketplace and it has been the worst performing over the last kind of year or something. That's why I think it's going to be one of the best performers over the next year if you look at it from that point of view. So it just depends on the way you look at it. So we've both got that kind of bias confirmation. Um, I know you, you don't like XRP at all 
I'm not trying to convince you otherwise, and I know you're not trying to convince me otherwise as well. I'm just, uh, we just need to kind of look at this objectively, and I do as well. I need to look at the kind of bad stuff as well, but I've done all that in the past. I've done my due diligence. Jason Clayton, XRP Q2 report confirms that um, this bot XRP will rectify over quarter three while starting new partners, so still looking up. Still looking up for me, big time, big time. Um, Roland Rocker, likes and comments are now disabled on BAB videos for some odd reason. That's strange. Kick, good morning. Thanks for the content. My pleasure, Kick. God boy, dump Tron. I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't like to be a holder of Tron just now. And um, Pete Van Den Ride, not a fan of Tron personally. I have some friends who love it so much they probably get a face tattoo. It's unbelievable how how much we fall in love with a crypto, as well. And I'm verging towards that. I'm trying. Trying. To, it's like a car crash. You see in slow motion. It's like me with XRP. You see in slow motion. I'm joining the XRP army but I don't want to I want to be as objective as possible and kind of just look at the two sides um, but I'm kind of veering down that XRP army route and I don't want to do that uh, and I'm kind of very well aware of that as well I never want to fall in love with a coin like I did with Bab never want that to happen again um, because you're, you're just blinded you're just blinded by all the kind of bad stuff kind of out there as well you're blinded by the red flags you're blinded by a lot of stuff um, and when that happens, you you kind of screwed, unless they do good things and they just kind of they, they do amazing. But I never want to be kind of like that blinded again. And B Scott has got coin in talks with Scott government at the moment. We'll see how Brexit turns out. Yeah, well Scotland's going to get uh, independence soon as well, um, <laughs> especially with Boris Johnson getting in. Um, but Scotland's going to get uh, independence soon, I would imagine. So Scott coin might be a good um, kind of viable solution but I, I don't know how he's going to uh, he's going to use it I've been speaking to him I don't know how he's going to use it it's not for a national kind of currency so to speak but I think that could be a good thing to do that uh, God to boy agree um, got to be a balance you show I criticize it well that's what to do we just have a back and forth a banter um, I've always been sus on Tron yeah I've been sus for a while I used to love Tron I used to love it I thought this is going to be an amazing token they've got so much so many fingers and so many pies and then I started to get these kind of red flags uh, and it's coming every time I get I, I just wish I bloody got red flags at the start before I get into something because um, I got into titanium got a red flag there got into bab got a red flag there got out at the right time but not early enough to save me 120,000 freaking dollars um, worth with Bab. Um, so I wish I got these red flags earlier in this kind of uh, spidey sense, but at least uh, I sit, I've saved some money. I've saved some money by getting out at the right time or getting out when I did. So um, Tron was another kind of red flag one as well when I got out and stopped trading it um, as well. So I don't know. We've just got how do you develop that? It's just a kind of sense you get, I think. The revolutionist is scalping a good day trading strategy in your opinion as I'm not a trader but I understand the candles flags um, it can be it can be it depends I think if you're scalping I think if you want to do it full time if you want to do it full time um, I think it could be a good way um, to do it uh, scalping you're talking about maybe using the five minute charts or something like that you could definitely do that and make uh, money on it but what I would do is I would it's about being disciplined being a trader being a day trader is extremely extremely difficult because you've got to be extremely disciplined so for example if we were to go back to and i'm just looking at xrp xrp is coming out it is breaking out of that symmetrical triangle so we could be looking for a move up to 3900 for xrp anyway so we'll go back to btc usd and answer that question so we'll go to five minute So you can scalp here. So scalping really means you're just taking a small percentage or you're taking um, a much more and you're just looking for the small gains. That's what you're looking for. So you could have scalped here and say you're looking for 10%. If you're on 10x margin, you're looking for 1% gain up here. You wouldn't have got that there because it was 0.8%. Um, but you'd still be in the trade just now. So you can do it, but you'd have to be extremely disciplined. And as I was explaining earlier on, you don't want to anticipate a crossover. If you're using a crossover strategy, it depends what strategy you're using. 
You don't want to anticipate a crossover before it actually happens. Now you could be using the Bollinger Bands as well. Uh, I don't think I've got the BA on here or the BBs on here. Yeah, you could be using Bollinger Bands, uh, a cross between Bollinger Bands, crossover, RSI, etc. You could be doing all that and then MACD. Of course, there's lots of strategies to kind of use scalping for scalping. I still think for scalping, you can use a crossover. You could even do it on a minute chart. If you're looking for scalping, you could use a minute chart, crossover to 9712. It did go up to 9805. Could have gone 0.95% on a 10x margin, that's 9%. So it might have got out there. So the discipline comes in when you say, okay, I'm going to take out 10%. As soon as it gets to 10% on the margin, then I'm going to get out. Uh, and remember, you've got fees for trading as well, um, especially if you're trading on margin. So you have to be careful of that as well. So same as shorting as well. On the minute chart, you can see you'd be in and out, in and out, in and out. That'd just be a nightmare. So you don't want to trade on the minute chart, but you can trade on the minute chart um, for an entry position and then get out on a five minute chart and do something like that. So yeah, you can make money with it, um, but you have to wait in the confirmation. Don't anticipate a crossover if that's a strategy you're going to use uh, and just be extremely disciplined and you have to be at your computer screen all the time because literally we see here and we'll look on the minute chart to illustrate this even further and I'm just going to see an extreme move so it went from 9,845 to 9,650 dropped $200 literally within a space of three minutes you have to be watching your computer screen all the time if you're going to be kind of scalping but what you can do you can be um, and what I would like to do as a trader as well what I like to do as a trader if you're scalping if you get a winning trade so if you went short in 9910 and you let it ride for 2.55 percent 10x margins 25 percent you get out of that trade and you feel good you don't trade straight away you you walk away you walk away from the emotions of that kind of feeling good on that on the high and thinking you're invincible you just walk away and treat every trade as a, a brand new trade and um, thinking going into it with the the thought okay I, I want to preserve money here I don't want to lose it obviously you want to gain money and look at it from that point of view so there's a lot of things the mindset goes on on a trader especially when you're scalping as well I'm sorry I went on a wee bit there but I hope you get what I mean I hope that helps revolutionist Chris Cash crypto Bobby latest video was over all right okay uh, was all about the XRP sales last quarters also interesting to watch just to see the other side yeah so it depends on how you interpret that quarter as a quarter two report I believe that came out so it depends on how you interpret that as well um, so there's a lot of good things in that as well so a lot of the XRP army were saying this is brilliant transactions are up everything's up and the XRP haters were saying this is terrible and look at the amount of billions of put in the market they've not got all that back in escrow again it's just so it depends on how you look at it. And G Slick, you've not mentioned Digibuy for a while. Digibuy could be launching a New Zealand stable through DigiAssets. Uh, is it a New Zealand? Is that what you're talking about? An NZ stable through DigiAssets. Excellent. Um, Chris Cash, but I have 35k XRP myself, so hope on the moonshot. And um, we'd just like to see the other sides too. Yeah, I think it's important to do that. You don't want to go careering right and, and just smack bang in the middle of the XRP army camp. You definitely don't want that. You need to be kind of objective. Revolution, revolutionists, thank you very much for the ten pound donation. Really appreciate that, mate. Uh, really appreciate that. Thanks. Um, Gordy boy, on the XRP subject, to drop one comment into Telegram group, constructive question, and got banned. Oh, from us? No, surely not from us. Ah, right. And the and the XRP. Kind of right. I, was, I thought you were talking about in our group. I was going to say we wouldn't kind of ban anybody for doing that. Um, but you're talking about in the XRP Telegram group. Uh, Gary Permenter, don't worry, Steve. We have all bought a few lemons along the way. Bax is up 4%, so they'll still cling to hope. Uh, generally, I hope they do it. I hope they do it. London Bobby, Tron and um, Bet turned into Wink. Uh, kind of caught me off guard. I'm waiting for Tron Live Sports Betting for entertainment purposes only. So yeah, Tron could be good. They could be good. As I said, they've got fingers and a lot of pies. So even if one of them works and just kind of takes off to the moon, then it could be really good. Mervyn Skidmore, right back in the first bid, you showed up Bab. Paul had a kind of caught in the headlights look about him. Or was it just me? 
No, I thought I liked Paul and Adam, to be honest, when I was speaking to them, that really gave me confidence. I didn't really have confidence in Rush D, to be honest, um, and just his kind of ability to communicate and stuff like that just wasn't that great. But when I was speaking to Paul and Adam, and you've seen the video kind of released as well, I showed the, the video where I said, okay, listen, I've got $120,000 skin in the game just now. Is this going to come off? Because um, I don't want to kind of sell and I don't want to sell into the market. It's just going to create a panic if I do so, sell that much. And they said, no, we're still looking, or basically, they said, we're still looking to get the, the license by December 2018. Um, and it just didn't happen. So they gave me um, a bit of confidence and, well, a lot of confidence in Bab. And in turn, that gave me confidence to speak about Bab as well. And I wish I hadn't. I really wish I hadn't because I know a lot of people have lost a lot of money because of it. But I've lost, potentially, I haven't lost it, potentially, I didn't put in 120,000, uh, but potentially I've lost 120,000. It was at its peak. I had I held about 120, 140,000 worth of BAB at one time. And that kind of all went down the tubes and I came out with 10,000. 10, so a lot of money. As a long-time holder of XRP, I've seen a lot of FUD come and go. It's all part of it. Yeah, totally. It is all part of the game, B. Gordy boys, anyone knows some crypto YouTubers um, have either hung their boots up or broadcasting very rarely. That's what I was saying last week, um, Gordy boy. A lot of people are just doing that. I think a lot of people are just dropping out the space. A lot of people are just dropping out. They're saying, right, enough's enough. And they're, they're tired of the manipulation, tired of, just tired of crypto. And I totally understand that. I totally get that. Because there is, you cannot read Bitcoin. It's not like a normal kind of chart. It's really difficult to read and um, Bitcoin just now. Even with the good news coming out with altcoins as well, nothing really much happens. And you just go, is there any point? And I can imagine a lot of people just say, okay, I still believe in crypto. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy Bitcoin when I can every month or every couple of months or something when they can afford it and just hold Bitcoin. They just hold it and they don't take anything more to do with the day-to-day -day news or the crypto or the FUD or kind of all the kind of comings and goings and all the kind of drama about crypto as well. Totally get that. Totally get it. In fact, I've thought about myself just doing that because it's just because it's just so up and down. It's just so volatile. And it's so, so clearly manipulated as well. And just go, what is the point sometimes? And this is why I think um, I've kind of gone into XRP and just say, okay, I'm just going to hold. I'm not going to trade it and I've not been tempted to just not as if I'm addicted to trading. I've not been tempted to kind of trade the XRP they've got. I've been more tempted to buy more in. I've been looking to get more XRP, but I'm looking for trading money as well. Um, so I'm more kind of thinking longer term now instead of trading, but I do like the trading, I must admit. Axel, top of the morning to you as well. Kukla, thoughts on MFT? MFT. I'm going to show you one thing here and this doesn't say it all but for me it kind of does um, one second just going to look at this one sec just now Yeah, that was it. Um, looking for so this is McKagan. We know about McKagan, but I just think just what it comes across when I've seen him video and stuff like that. McKagan looking at McKagan again. This is about the leaders, it's not about the kind of company as a, a kind of whole. But if you've got somebody like McKagan leading this company as well, you've got a photo like that. To be honest for the ceo of a company as well and some of the videos that he's come out with as well no i don't i'm not keen on nft i thought for trading because i used to trade it and i thought when i was trading coins as well on binance I thought right, i'm going to start looking into every single binance coin and just give a, a quick rundown a one page kind of resume of every single binance coin and then when i started looking into it and i started looking at mainframe i thought jesus man this this is not 
the way a leader should be kind of acting. When I've seen a couple of his videos as well, and I just thought, when I've seen that picture, that kind of sums up. And if you've ever heard of Annette in Scotland, if you're from Scotland, you know what Annette is. It's a non-educated delinquent. That's what they're called, Neds. And the, they're really funny when you kind of see them portrayed and stuff like that. But that's kind of what comes across as. I'm not trying to put because I don't know him. I don't know, obviously, about the company. Um, but... For me, as I know, um, when, I, when I seen that, I stopped trading um, kind of MFT altogether, thinking this could go back up, it could be really good. But for that, that kind of just done it for me. And it might be a stupid thing to look at that, but I think the way you do the small things is the way you do the big things. If you present yourself that way in your kind of Twitter feeds and you kind of do it in video format as well, it's not good. If that's the way you kind of do the small things, imagine what the bigger things are going to be like, the bigger decisions you have to make, the bigger kind of people that you're going to have to meet the people you're going to have to shake hands with. If you're a businessman, you don't portray yourself that way at all. And that's why I went off Justin's son as well. You do not um, kind of have to fud somebody else. You do not have to put down other people in order to make yourself look better. That's what Justin's son was doing with Vitaly Buterin and a couple of others as well. And I thought, that's it. I just kind of went off on that. That is not the way a leader should be. If that's not ethical. It's not the way things should be done. You don't need to do that in order to become good. You have to kind of set a standard. Mick Hagen doesn't set the standard. I know that's a long answer, but that's the answer for me as well, um, kind of Kukla. And hopefully you're not holding them. Hopefully you're not. But I have traded them in the past. It's probably still going to be a tradable coin, but um, to make it, I don't think it's going to make it. And again, I, I'm probably totally 100% wrong, but it's just my opinion. Gary Permenta, unstoppable domains are currently uploading hundreds of thousands of domains on Zillica. Next move, next domains, where those who purchase sale names get 60% credit towards next names. I think that's going to happen a lot with a lot of companies. They're going to get a lot of that. They're going to follow what Zillica have done. Kim O'Brien, so glad I done TRX a couple of months ago. Excellent. Excellent. I know you were speaking about this, um, Kim. Um, God, the boys, Steve, have you done a stream on passive income? I haven't done that. Funny enough, I made the video yesterday on passive income. And just looking at passive income from crypto as well. So I did uh, a video yesterday on five strategies to make money from um, kind of crypto. And I'm going to release that. Obviously, that's for the free crypto training class, which you need to sign up for below. So that is coming. So I'll show you that as well, but, but just very briefly. Um, G Slick, hot price looking good. What time are we on? Oh, we're still got time. So look at HOT BTC. That's a one minute chart, you don't want to see that. 12 Satoshi. I still uh, still look at um, kind of whole chain, still think they could be really good. It's not a buy at the moment, unfortunately, if you're looking for a, an entry price. There's no buy, there's no crossover there at the moment. On the four hour, it's gone down. On the hourly, you're not going to see that much. Still down as well. Yes, yeah, so I'd be waiting maybe till it got to 14.15 till there was a confirmation there. But you have got support round about here. You've got good support at 11 Satoshi and 12 Satoshi. Chris, you had a look at the new IEO of Wink or Binance. I haven't had a look at it. Um, very briefly, I kind of see and then I thought, uh, this is correct, um, just to correct me if I'm wrong here because I've not looked too deep into it. I've seen this part first, so just look at Wink. So allocation pair winning ticket, maximum number of winning lottery tickets is going to be 200,000. Allocation pair winning ticket is 30 USD. Now is it still going to be the case that you can only get five tickets? I don't think it will be. Surely it can be. So the number of tickets you can claim will be based on the average of these seven snapshots. So how many tickets can you actually win at a time? Surely it can be five. If it is, then I wouldn't even kind of look at it. That's what turned me off straight away when I seen it. But it might not be five tickets. So public sale, maximum number of 30 allocation per one ticket. No lock up, seed sale, token price, one on seed allocation. So I don't know, so correct me if I'm wrong, it surely cannot be five tickets that you can win. 
There must be a hell of a lot more. But even then, if you could win 30 tickets, that's still on $900 or something. But a potential $900. So, no, I wasn't interested when I seen that. It kind of turned me off straight away and I stopped kind of reading after that. But I probably need to look at more, um, being honest. Chris, I swapped some XRP for 250 BNB so I could get 25 lotto tickets for Wink, then we'll buy back my XRP. Ah, so it's a 25. And it's 25 you can get. So what's that about? And that is about $750. 25 times 30, is that right? 10 times 30 is 300, 300, yeah. 750. I'm just buying Bitcoin for now. G Slick. Yeah. I think that's going to be a good a good strategy. Just buy the big ones, Bitcoin, um, can the top 10 say? Basically, I'm not going to go through it again. Calipermenta, crypto being a 24 7 market requires a deal of fatigue management. Yes, definitely. The trick may be to find a rock solid altcoins with a progressive team and go all in. Your XRP strategy is what is required right now. I think it is. I'm, I'm leaning more and more towards that. I still, because I love trading, because I love crypto space, because I love, I love the drama of crypto, to be honest. I do like the drama and see where it unfolds and how we're progressing as well. I do like that, but it does get very tiring. And that's why I've kind of went all in for, more or less all in for XRP. Um, and I've kind of calculated how much I need to become a millionaire <laughs> or get half a million. Uh, and it's not that much, to be honest. Um, and if I can see kind of XRP going up to kind of 10, 12 dollars, I'll just look at it again. So if I was to get 500,000 dollars, to get that, I've got 54,152 just now, just at the moment, I'm building up more. So I would need kind of XRP to get to $500,000, and um, for me personally, it would be $9. That's only 30x from where it is just now. If you're talking three years' time, I think that's very feasible. I'm willing to wait three years for $500,000. I'm willing to wait three years for that. So, yeah. Uh, that's kind of where I'm going, but still, as I said, love the trading as well. And if I can get more XRP or more Bitcoin, then I'll do that. But especially Ethereum, I think Ethereum is going to explode. And I don't know why, as I get these, um, this big, big, big sense that Ethereum is going to explode as well. Yeah, I think Ethereum is going to blow up uh, and we're going to see um, kind of $1,500, $2,000 again. Thoughts on Nash. Uh, I like the look of Nash. Going to wait and um, see what happens on Saturday as well for Nash, for the AMA. VR, Sonny Lou is a great CEO. It gives you so much confidence in the project. Yeah, see, when you've got confidence in a project like Brad Garlinghouse as well, um, and you've got confidence in the CEO, and you've got other people there, David Schwartz um, as well, and you can look at them and just say, you can tell they're kind of passionate. They know what they're talking about. As they're not just in it for the money. They're in it to make a difference and to make money as well. But you should be. But when you look at people like that and then you look at other people like McKagan, then you just go, it's just a world of difference. And that's when you say, okay, right, time to not be invested in this kind of company anymore. Um, could quite no, used to trade it, but sold long ago. Good, good. I was hoping <laughs> you didn't hold any. Just thought it might be a good opportunity to scalp. As I said, it's going to be a good trading coin. I still think it's going to be a good because what, what's going to happen, people are going to look at it, they're not necessarily going to know about the company or anything, they're going to look at the project MFT and say it's about time MFT were kind of in there again, they're going to start buying and it's going to take a run up of 50-100% um, and you could still, so it's going to be a good trading coin. Uh, be inspired is in the house, hello to you, good to see you here. Um, Chris Gamu, they will be dropping wing to TRX but BTT holders over 12 months. Hmm. Uh, great description of an ad there. <laughs> Um, the B, obviously, you know what I'm talking about. And the Neds will be coming up with the tops off um, <laughs> and because it's summer uh, as well. Talking about. Because um, Max BNB is 250, Max Lotto is 25 tickets, 30 USD. Right, I'm with you. Brilliant. Crypto Don Juan just made it. Good morning to you. No, not heard from you in a while, DJ. So I don't know what you've been up to. Um, but good to see you here, mate. Good to see you in the kind of group chat this morning as well. I think that's a perfect note to leave it on for today and for the weekend as well. As I said, I will be working on the videos. I'll be working on the premium group. I'm setting up a new premium group. There's a training group there. 
and there'll be Q and A's there as well. Just answer Q and A's in the premium um, kind of program as well. So that is coming out on the twenty eighth, which is going to be Sunday. It's going to be open midnight on Sunday, um, GMT time. Um, so make sure you sign up, even if you're a premium member, to um, to get the free videos. Sign up down below as well, and we'll get you set up with that on the Sunday night and give you the free videos as well and your chance to join the premium group which is only open for seven days so open sunday midnight closes next sunday midnight in august so look forward to seeing more new members but it will be closing so even if we don't get any members it'll still be closing after seven days um so look forward to seeing you um, some new faces in there as well okay have a brilliant um, day have a brilliant weekend whatever you're doing and stay safe when you're trading and just be careful and until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now.